Hello everybody, we are in week 9 of this course. In this week, we shall discuss counter. So, we begin with a discussion on asynchronous counter which we shall take up in this particular class. Before that, we shall have a quick recap of what we discussed in week 8. So, if you remember, we discussed shift register and there we noted that the number of bits in the register defines how many uh, information can be stored, digital information can be stored and we discussed uh, various configuration of it, parallel input, parallel output, serial input, parallel output, parallel input, serial output and serial input, serial output. And we noted that serial in and serial out uh, gives the option of having uh, less number of input output pins, but the time required for data write and data read is more. And we also noted that uh, for serial data out, uh, the way we read the data in such case as such is destructive, but if we feed the data back, then it will be uh, the data can be restored, rewritten in the shift register. And we saw various application of shift register, uh, serial to parallel, parallel to serial conversion and then uh, using that to uh, for a serial to serial communication which reduces the number of transmission channel required that is required. Then sequence generator, sequence uh, detector, uh, ring counter, Johnson counter, introducing delay of appropriate uh, of uh, required time. And then we uh, discussed at length linear feedback shift register and its various use. And uh, as pseudo random number generator, it has various use in uh, from cryptography to many different places. And uh, we also saw uh, cycle redundancy check uh, generation uh, and also detection uh, any error uh, in that uh, code uh, that is code word uh, for any uh, especially it was useful for bust error uh, checking. So that kind of use also we have seen. And finally, we saw use of shift register in efficient realization of adder, uh, adder comes subtractor, multiplier, divider. Okay. So, with this we discuss, we uh, start discussion on counter. Uh, so, counter, uh, what is a counter? So, counter keeps record of the number of times a particular event has occurred. Okay. So, it keeps a count. So, the way I mean the uh, name itself can uh, give us an idea and to uh, note uh, how the how many such uh, event has uh, taken place. So, the counter circuit uh, with the memory element in it, it advances its state one by one. Okay? And one particular state is associated with one specific count. So, there is a uniqueness in uh, this particular thing. So, a specific set Say, uh, state is associated with one count. And if this uh, advancing of state is in sequential order, okay, so 0, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, then uh, if it is advancing, uh, it is increasing, then it is up counter and if it is decreasing, the other way it happens, it is called down counter. Okay. But as I said, the basic idea is you need to have a unique state. So, it is not necessary that it is always need to be in that manner. So, it could be any random but unique state, so, but as many number of state as many count that is required here. So, in that is also possible in that case it is random or irregular uh, sequence will be there. And uh, the way the uh, events trigger all the flip flops that is there uh, in the counter design in the make, uh, make of the counter, uh, it can happen that uh, the trigger is going to each of the flip flop and uh, simultaneously each of the flip flop can get triggered. So, that is called synchronous, synchronously it is happening. So, that is called synchronous counter. And if that if the trigger, the external trigger that is coming uh, that is going to one of the uh, flip flop, then that flip flop in turns, uh, in turn uh, triggers the next and so on and so forth. Okay. As if the effect of uh, the one is uh, going past, uh, you know, to the other to a, in a ripple manner. So, that is called ripple counter. Also, it is because ha it is happening 
in different point of time. So, that was that is why it is called not exactly you know same synchronous with the external trigger. So, it is also called asynchronous counter. Okay. Uh, modulo n or modulo uh, a mod n counter has got n different states. Okay. So, that the number that is the way it is associated and after uh, n uh, such trigger after the count of n it comes back to its initial value. And if there are m flip flops used for counter design of course, 2 to the power m need to be greater than or equal to m. Okay. And usually in most of the applications discussion that we will have clock is given as input trigger, but it could be some other signal also. And mod n counter is also called divided by n counter. So, we shall soon see that the output of the counter effectively will be having the rate of change of the signal which is original signal that is the clock or the uh, input trigger divided by the modulo number. Okay. So, with this uh, basic understanding of how uh, counter uh, works or counter is supposed to work, we look at uh, asynchronous up counter. We begin our discussion with asynchronous up counter. Okay. So, for that we are having a circuit made up of JK flip flop. We could have some other flip flop as well, but JK flip flop we have taken it up. Okay. So, what you see here that both the inputs of each of the JK flip flop is connected to 1 tied to VCC that means 1. So, each of the flip flop when they get the trigger okay, the clock at the negative edge of it okay, this is negative edge trigger okay, all of you can see that. So, it is supposed to toggle. Okay. So, that is for sure. Now, let us see how things move. So, the clock is given here only to the first flip flop right as I, as I was saying that is it is asynchronous. So, the clock is not fed to each of the flip flop only the first flip flop is getting the clock right. Then what will happen after neg the negative edge. So, initially all of the flip flops are uh, initialized with a value say 0 0 0. Okay. So, after the negative edge comes as you see the timing diagram it will toggle it will become 1. Another negative edge comes. Okay. So, this flip flop will become 0. Right. So, then again 1 0 1 0 1 0 and 1. So, this is the way it will continue. Is it clear? So, this is how the first flip flop will work. Right. We will discuss about second and third little later. So, the clock is directly connected the external trigger which is getting counted how many clock cycles or how many negative edge of the clock occurring that is going directly to the flip flop A and the flip flop A is toggling in each of the negative edge in each clock cycle right at these points A, B, C, D, E the way you see it. Is it fine? Now, what happens this flip flop B is getting a feel a getting an idea about the triggering through A not directly from the clock. So, whenever A changes A output A okay, uncomplemented output A is connected as clock to flip flop B. So, whenever A changes from high to low right. So, a trigger comes that is serving as a clock right. Now, for every two change in the clock you can see A changes by 1 this two cycle these are the two cycles then A changes by changes there are two negative edges here then there is one negative edge of the clock. Okay. So, for every two such clock trigger you get one trigger out uh, over here for flip flop B. Okay. So, it is coming via A right it is coming as a, you know kind of uh, the effect is rippling through flip flop A to coming to flip flop B right. So, at the negative edge of the A flip flop output right the B flip flop will toggle that is the idea. So, A B is remaining 0 0 over here for this time instances. So, only at time instant B when it gets a negative edge it goes it toggles. So, it goes from 0 to 1. Now, how long will it, will it remain in 1 as long as 
next negative edge from A comes here because A is fed as clock. So next negative edge A comes at D, you can see here, right? So at the time from 1, 1 it comes to 0. So next negative edge will come at F, so it goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1 and this way it goes on. Is it fine? Okay. Now let us look at C. What happens to C? C is getting triggered from B. Okay. So, similarly, whenever B goes from high to low, that time this C is triggered and triggered in the sense it is both the inputs are 1, so it will toggle. So, let us see when B is going from high to low. So, B is going from high to low at D and again at H. Right? So, these are the instances 1 to 0 and again 1 to 0. So, C is changing, C is remaining 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? because it has not got any trigger. Right? Though flip flop A has got triggered in every clock cycle, B has got triggered in every two clock cycle, C has not got triggered up to this only in the fourth clock cycle, you can see A, B, C, D, right? it is getting a trigger okay? and at that time since it is toggling it goes from 0 to 1 and it remains at 1 till next negative edge of B comes and it goes from 1 to 0 and this way it continues. Is it fine? So, this is what is happening to the flip flops. right? Now, by this what have you achieved in terms of you know count? So, if you now look at the uh, values of C, B, A, if you read it in this manner C, MSB, P, C is your MSB and A is your LSB. If you read it this way, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 you can read in each of this clock cycle right? up to A. From A to B it is 0, 0, 1, B to C it is 0, 1, 0, C to D it is 0, 1, 1. Okay? So, these are the uh, you know, clock cycles and 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Right? What is it in binary? 0 to 7 you have come, then again it is 0, 0, 0. Okay? So, you have got these states if you put it in the, in the tabular form 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and again it is coming to 0. Right? So, what is it? It is nothing but up count the number is sequentially increasing right? and it is a modulo 8 counter because 8 distinct states are there. Now, if you look at the output of flip flop A, right? you can see for every 2 changes in clock 1 changes happening here. So, clock cycle uh, period of time period of A, one period of A is just half of uh, sorry twice that of the clock period, right? 2 clock period are consumed in one cycle of uh, A. So, frequency wise for every 2 uh, you know cycle, one cycle of A is seen. So, the frequency of A is half of it, then half of the clock. Frequency of B, 1 fourth and frequency of C that is the last flip flop over here, you are having a frequency which is divided by 8. So, you can see that divided by 8, it is a modulo 8 counter because 8 states are there. So, you can get up to, uh, I mean if you from the last output A uh, divided by 8 count okay, uh, output. So, far so good, we have got a uh, up counter, uh, modulo 8 up counter by a very simple mechanism the output of one is fed as clock to the next flip flop and each uh, flip flop is toggling. Now, in this what was not visible in the uh, previous uh, case uh, that is uh, the timing diagram. So, that we are trying to show by stretching the diagram in somewhat okay, and uh, introducing the time delay associated with each flip flop transition. Okay. So, let us see what, what is uh, it. So, this is the clock. right? So, clock has got a negative edge over here. Now, flip flop A is changing, but it will take a, a propagation delay which is defined here as T suffix P. Right? So, after that time only A will go up 
Similarly, it will go down here after that propagation time, or propagation delay, TP, right? Is it fine? So that will happen in every cases. Now flip flop B. So flip flop B is not fed by the clock directly. It is fed by the flip flop A, right? So when flip flop A changes after that one more propagation delay, which is required inside flip flop B for its output to change, that will be there. So from the clock clocking instant over here, the negative edge B changes change of B will take place change of A required that is one propagation delay plus change of B that is required. So two propagation delay will be there within this. So that is what is shown here. So two propagation delay will get involved. And for C what will happen? C is not again fed by clock, okay, triggered by clock, it is triggered by B. So B is taking two propagation delay from the clocking instant. So it will take another propagation delay. So three propagation delay will come into picture. Is it clear? So the way, this way you can see in this arrangement, the propagation delay are cumulative, right? And if you are, you know, having a very fast uh, clocking, right? Then this propagation delay, when they add it up for an n bit counter, right? And becomes comparable with the time period of this particular uh, clock, okay? Then there can be problem, okay. So this addition, when it goes extend beyond this time period, then what will happen? Within this time period over here, never this 100 will occur. So for example, over this is the way you see 0, 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0, right. So this is the corresponding clock cycle, okay. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is the fourth uh, clock cycles after, you know, starting from 0, okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, right so this is the fourth clock edges have come right but if it extends beyond this so fifth clock edge will come and 100 is not shown so that is what is something uh, uh, comes as a cause of concern so this is one issue with uh, this kind of you know arrangement right another is what you can see after 0, 0, 0, this is 0, 0, 1, after that 0, 1, 0 is supposed to come in up counter, but momentarily you can see for a small duration 0, 0, 0 is there because A has changed, but B is taking one more propagation delay to change, okay. Similarly over here, after 0, 1, 1, you are expecting 1, 0, 0, 0 to come, 1, 0, 0, right, but momentarily you can see that 0, 1, 0 is there and then 0, 0, 0 is there, right, after that. 100 is coming, right? So, this can cause glitch in the circuit, okay? So, this is something which one need to be careful about, okay? And uh, we shall see solutions and many other things before uh, uh, later, but this is something which we take note in asynchronous counter uh, in this discussion, this part of the discussion. Now, we look at asynchronous down counter, okay? So asynchronous up counter we have seen. So asynchronous down counter again we look at modulo 8 counter. These are these are three flip flops up to with this three two to the power three maximum modulo 8 counter is possible. So in this what is done? You can see the circuit input side remains the same. Each flip flop will toggle. Okay, clock is given to the first flip flop. Right, and over here the instead of A. A bar is fed as clock to the next flip flop B. B bar is fed as uh, clock to the next flip flop that is C. Is it fine? Okay. So by this what happens? So initial state is 0, 0, 0 and A will toggle in age every um, you know clocking uh, and negative edge of the clock that is for sure this is the first flip flop right. So that is 0, 1, 0, 1 that is what you see for A which is okay, which is similar to what we had seen before. Now, because of A bar faders clock, what happens? So, this will change at negative edge, right? So, A is going from, in this particular place, A is going from high to low, okay? Sorry, A is going from here low to high. 
So, what will happen to A bar? A bar will go from high to low, isn't it? If you plot A bar alongside, okay, A is going from high to low. So, A bar will go from uh, A is going from low to high. So, A will go from high to low. So, there is a negative edge. There is a negative edge over here, which will trigger it. Trigger it means it will toggle. So, B will go from then 0 to 1. Is it fine? Now, when B goes from 0 to 1, B goes from 0 to 1, right? B bar, what happens to B bar? B bar will go, so that was A bar before. Now, B bar will go from uh, high to low, 1 to 0. So, that will also, that will trigger C. So, C will go from 0 to 1. Is it clear? Because it is just opposite of it, right? Wherever there is a positive, positive edge for A, okay, there is a negative edge for A bar. Similarly, for B bar and uh, C bar is not fed anywhere. So, it would have been for C bar also, okay, if there was a flip flop D, right. So, at positive edges of A, B, actually transition are happening, okay, because uh, for the subsequent flip flops, because A bar and B bar are fed as clock. So, this positive edge is over here. So, 0, 0, 0, it becomes 1, 1, 1, right. Next, this A is changing, right? And A is changing over here, it is going from high to low, and it is high to low means A bar is going from low to high, so no change, right? Understood? Again, A is going from low to high here, so output will uh, go from uh, A bar will go from high to low, so here A bar is going from high to low. So, there is a change in B. So, it is coming from going from 1 to 0. So, this is the way it continues. So, what you can see 1 1 1 after that 1 1 0 after that 1 0 1. Okay. Again B goes from low to high here. So, high to low will be in this particular place. So, C changes over here. Okay. And C does not change when B goes from high to low because B bar is what is fed here unlike the previous case. So, this way you can see 1 1 1, this way if you read MSB to LSB, C to A, 1 1 0, 1 0 1, 1 0 0, 0 1 1, okay. and these are the counting states. right? Is it fine? And it is up to going, going up to 0 0 0, right? uh, 0 0 1 and then it is 0 0 0, after that again 1 1 1 will get loaded. Okay? Right. So, it is moderate down counter. Now, one important thing uh, to be noted here. So, you have taken output A, B, C. Right. Now, if uh, inverted output is also available, please understand this part. If this counter circuit also allows you inverted output to the outside world, okay. that means A bar, B bar and C bar. Okay. So, what the reading for C bar, B bar, A bar would have been in these cases? Can you uh, identify? So, for example, this was 0, 0, 0, right? After that, it has gone to 1, 1, 1. Okay. So, 1, 1, 1 and then 1, 1, 1 inverted is 0, 0, 0 only. Okay. So, after that, it is uh, 1 1 0. So, 1 1 0 is your uh, what? Inverted is 0 0 1, then 1 0 1. So, 1 is 1 inverted will be 0, C bar will be 0, this is 1, uh, this is 1 0 1, 1 0, and this is 0. So, just invert of this, and initially when it was 1 0 0 0, it would have been initially it was 1 1 1. We are Wedding that. So, this way it will continue. So, what is it? It is up counter only, up counting. So, the inverted outputs, complemented outputs will, if available, will give you up count, while uh, the uh, standard one, uncomplemented outputs are giving you down counter for A bar and B bar fed as clock to the subsequent uh, flip flops, right. 
So similarly in the previous arrangement, the up counter we had seen had we uh, the option of taking the output from uh, C bar, B bar, A bar, then output there would have shown uh, down count. Okay. So, this we again take a note. Now, uh, having understood uh, how up counter and uh, down counter works in a asynchronous counter, okay. so can we have one circuit okay, which can both work as up counter and uh, down counter and depending on our requirement, we can make it work like up counter and for another use, we can make it work like a down counter. So, here is a circuit. So, the flip flops A, B, C are there, the inputs are 1, 1 that means for every clocking available here, it will trigger, okay. it will sorry, it will toggle, okay. it will go to the uh, other value. If it is 0, it will go to 1, 1, it, is, it will go to 0. Okay. Now, uh, we have put an additional input M. So, M is can be considered as mode okay, control input. So, if M is 0, what happens? Let us see for this particular circuit. right? So, M is 0, you can see M here, this is 2 AND gate and 1 OR gate. So, it is more like a 2 2, I mean it is uh, the way the 2 2 1 multiplexer circuit you have seen, but in a different context. right? So, M is equal to 0, this means this is equal to 1. Right, this is equal to 1 and this is equal to 0. So, 0 means this AND gate output is 0 irrespective of what is there in the other output okay? because for AND gate 0 is a forcing input and since it is 1 for this AND gate whatever it changes in A that will go here right? and for OR gate 0 is a non forcing input. So, whatever change is occurring it will come here. So, effectively M is equal to 0, A is coming here. Similarly, B is coming here. Right? And if A comes and B comes, the way we have seen the circuit, it is up counter only. Instead of this, if M is equal to 1, this is 0. So, this is 0 and this is 1. Right? So, this is 0 and this is 1. So, what is happening at that time? A bar is going to the clock of B flip flop and B bar is going to the clock of C flip flop. Right? So, what is this arrangement? If you are taking output from A, B, C, the uncomplemented uh, you know output of each of the flip flop. Okay. So, then it is acting like a down counter. So, m is equal to 0 up counter, m is equal to 1 down counter. This is the way we can make it work. Okay. In one circuit, both the things are there. right? So, while it is counting, uh, it has counted up to a particular level uh, value, then you are changing m, then again it will start counting in the opposite direction. So, it has count say uh, counted in the up count mode 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and then you have made it 1, so it will start down counting. Okay. So, finally, uh, we would like to see uh, one uh, standard IC which gives uh, this asynchronous uh, up count. Okay. So, IC 7493 is one such uh, IC uh, which has got uh, Actually, uh, if you look at the inside the, the circuit, uh, um, a mod 8 count counter over here and a mod 2 counter. Okay. Two such units are there in uh, this particular IC. So, this is clock B and this is clock A. Right? If you do not bother about uh, clock A, right? if you just feed uh, uh, the outside clock to clock B, then what will happen? This circuit will behave like a, a mod 8 up counter. You can see this QB is going to the flip flop, QC is going to the flip flop. So, it is not uh, complemented output. So, it is uncomplemented output is going. So, it will be behaving like a up counter. Right? So, this part is mod 8 up counter and this part is mod 2 uh, counter. Right? Now, uh, in, instead of QD, if you are just looking at QB and QC, then these are mod 2 and mod 4, right? You will get a count of that thing. You have seen that be, be, before that it is a divided by 2 over here, divided by 4 over here, and divided by 8 over here. Okay. So, that is the uh, one, but as a whole, 3 flip flops are there, 8 unique states, uh, increasing uh, order. So, it is a mod 8 up counter, 
if you take it as a whole right now if you can if you make an external connection from qa to clock b over here right and feed the clock feed the clock here external clock here then what will happen so now forget about this one it is not there it is directly connected so instead of three flip flops now we are having four flip flops so in the earlier circuit timing diagram we stopped at a b and c then there will be a d coming over there right so that d will change for every uh, negative edge of c okay and that will one full cycle of it will occur for 8 plus 8 16 cycles uh, of the clock right so it will become a mod 16 counter okay because every uh, here when you are feeding the clock so if you can uh, if you remember the circuit so this is your clock so negative edge okay so the qa is changing over here and then again over here and then again over here right so this is halved so this is divided by 2 and this is divided by 8 right so together it is uh, divided by 16 so modulo 16 count that is what we will get right is it clear so extending what we had discussed before for three flip flops two four flip flip flops right additionally here you can see there are two other uh, inputs which are r01 and r02 if both of them are high both of them are high then what will happen this is an and gate so it will become low and you can see that there will be asynchronous clear okay asynchronous reset right okay it is required for initialization or for some other purposes that we shall discuss later and any one of them low okay then the normal count operation will take place up count operation will take place right and uh, why 2 why not 1 1 would have been sufficient okay more than that will be revealed in the subsequent discussion on the counter okay there is a specific reason to put this thing uh, some such thing okay which is helpful in certain context okay so to summarize counter keeps a record of the number of uh, times a particular event uh, has occurred by advancing its state which is unique for each count and for the modulo n counter in different uh, states are there and if m flip flops are there then with those m flip flops we can go up to 2 to the power m modulo number asynchronous counter the clocking of consecutive flip flops are uh, not by not from the same clock or the external trigger it is done uh, through a rippling effect from one flip flop to the another in up counter the counting state sequentially go up and in down counter it is sequentially come down okay and if you have the option of taking uh, the output from the uh, inverted outputs then the counter of opposite kind can be available uh, and in asynchronous counter important thing is that you have seen the propagation delay is cumulative for which uh, the is uh, I mean when this cumulative delay is of the order of the clock time period then a count can get missed and also it can uh, it has it can give glitch in between values may come up okay which can cause problem and uh, up down counter can be made where one same circuit can give both up count as well as down count by suitable choice of control input thank you